In this video, you'll learn about analog and digital electronic signals. Here's an example of a time varying voltage signal, BS. You'll see that BS can take on any value, so we call it an analog signal. You'll also notice that VS is defined and can change at any point in time, so we call it a continuous time signal. Such signals arise naturally, for example, from a condenser microphone or antenna or many other types of transducers. Often, we'd like to discretize the signal to facilitate its representation on a computer or to transmit the signal more robustly. To do so, first we sample the signal. That is, we represent it by considering only its values at discrete points in time, T0, T1, T2, T3, and so on in this picture. Typically, these time instants would be uniformly spaced and they would be taken frequently enough that the entire signal can be faithfully reproduced just from its sample values. Now, because V can still take on any value, it's still an analog signal. But it's now represented in discrete time. If we represent a number digitally, it can't take on any value. The number of different values it can take on is limited by the number of bits we use to represent it. So in order to represent the signal digitally, we have to quantize or round the values taken at every discrete time point to the nearest value that can be represented using the number of bits we have available. Once we've done so, we have a signal that's now represented in discrete time and is also discrete in amplitude. So this is what we commonly refer to as a digital signal. Digital signals are usually represented with a sequence of binary digits that can take on one of two values. Let's call them zero and one in this case. They're weighted in the representation of the digital signal by powers of two. So that the number D can take on any value, any integer value in this case, from zero all the way up to two to the n minus one, or two to the n different values for n bits. Physically, each bit is usually represented by a voltage that takes on one of two values. For example, 1.8 volts for logical one, and zero volts for logical zero. Those values can change at discrete points in time, corresponding to discrete times at which the original underlying signal was sampled. So to represent D, we need N node voltages. Note that if any of the voltages is corrupted by a small amount of noise, and it changes only by a small amount, that bit would still be interpreted as a one in this case, or a zero down here. So the underlying signal D wouldn't change at all. This is an important property that makes digital signals robust in the presence of noise, it makes them better for being stored on a computer or a disk, or for being transmitted over long distances. In summary, analog signals can take on any value. Physical analog signals are usually represented at all points in time. These are called analog continuous time signals. They can be sampled, resulting in a discrete time analog signal, which can still take on any value. Such signals can then be quantized. That is, they're rounded to the nearest signal level that can be represented by a string of bits. The resulting signal is represented by n voltages and can take on any one of two to the n possible signal levels. It's robust to noise and well suited to storage or computation in the computer and to communication digitally. In principle, it's also possible to have 
a quantized signal represented in discrete time. The resulting continuous time digital signal, although possible, is rarely used. So we won't talk about it further. Analog signals can be converted to digital signals and represented with n binary digits by circuits called analog to digital converters or A to D converters for short. They effectively perform the process of quantizing the analog input signal. When the analog input is continuous time in nature, some A to D converters can also be supplied with clock signal, which is a periodic signal that tells the A to D converter when to sample the continuous time waveform and it then goes on to quantize the sampled values of the input and then encode them in its digital outputs. Note that the reverse operation is also possible. Digital to analog converters take it as their input digital code and binary valued bits and converts those into analog voltages that can take on any one of two to the n different values. The voltages are then interpolated between somehow with an analog filter producing the analog continuous time waveform. Such circuits are called DDA converters. And they produce new analog output sample values at time intervals that are determined again by a clock. 